What's up guys and welcome back to another video. So a lot of you are probably wondering why I'd be making a video about repairing a leak on a copper joint. It's pretty straightforward. Just add some solder and it's fixed, right? Wrong. The answer is no. And I want to explain to you everything that's wrong when doing this and how to do it the proper way. Knowing how to solder is an art and it could take years to perfect. If you're new in the plumbing industry, it'll most probably happen to you that you solder a joint and you get this. So expect to have your pride dented when this happens. There's nothing to be proud of here. Now, there's two ways to fix this. There's the proper way, or there's the quick fix, temporary, gonna have to go back next year way. You could just patch it up like most plumbers do, or you could take the extra time and fix it the proper way, which I'll be showing you how to do in this video. So first off, I want to go through all the reasons why this might have happened so you don't have to make these mistakes on future joints. But before, if you're unfamiliar with soldering copper and all of the tools, materials and terms that are used, I suggest watching my How to Solder Copper Pipes video. It has clear step-by-step -step instructions on how to solder and it'll get you better familiarized after watching it. I'll be leaving a link in the description box below and also a card right here if you're interested. So the most common reason you'd get a leak in my opinion is due to the joint being underheated or overheated. When you overheat a joint for example, the flux, which is critical for proper capillary action, burns off and can't do its job anymore, which is to keep the joint free of any oxides and to draw in the solder. It's quite easy to know when it's too late, and that's when the flux carbonizes like this. It'll go from a liquid to a burnt form. You're now basically trying to solder without flux, and to show you what it looks like, I have one pipe with flux on it and one without. When I apply the solder, they both look very similar after they cool down, but as you could see, the one without flux didn't adhere properly because of all the impurities. So it's vital to keep it from burning in order to have a proper leak-free joint. Now, it's impossible for me to give a specific amount of time to heat a pipe, as there are so many variables in this case. But a good indicator to go by to know if the joint is hot enough is to probe it every 10 seconds or so. If the solder melts and gets drawn in, that means that it's hot enough. You could also underheat a joint. What I mean by this is only applying heat on one side for example and not heating the other. This applies more to bigger sized pipes as the heat takes a lot longer to be conducted around the joint. So you'd need to circle around it to get it hot evenly. The next reason would be that the pipe fitting, or even both, weren't properly cleaned. Prepping both the pipe and fitting is a must to ensure that the solder could be properly conveyed inside the joint. The flux, which is an acid, will do 90% of cleaning any oxides or greases that are already on the surface of the pipe. However, sticker glue or paint for example needs to be removed mechanically with sandpaper or an abrasive pad before fluxing to get it down to bare copper this also applies to the fittings they must be clean before assembling them or you run the chance of having a leak to clean the inside of the fittings i like getting a wire brush cutting the tip off and using it in my drill when doing big projects it's a lot easier and it's a lot quicker too and lastly, would be if you tried soldering with a bit of water in the pipe. Water is one of soldering's biggest enemies, and I made a thorough video on how to deal with this particular problem. I'll also link this video in the description box below and right here for you to watch. The reason why you might get a leak is because the standing water at the bottom of the pipe absorbs most of the heat, but not at the top. So the top will melt the solder but won't fill the bottom because it's too cold. So some precautions need to be taken before in order to not run into this issue. So let's move on to how to fix the leak now. What a lot of plumbers or do-it-yourselfers do most times as a quick fix is to apply a tad bit of flux on the area, heat it and apply a bit of solder to patch the pinhole. 
By doing this, you're only surface filling the pinhole. Let me explain. If there's water coming out the hole, it means there's a clear path from the back of the joint to the front of the joint. And as much as you try to get it entirely filled, you'd never be able to because it's not properly prepped anymore. Also, by only patching it, you're compromising the joint's structural integrity. So, in order to have a strong joint that resists vibrations, hard water, and other factors, the joint must be completely filled. Now, seeing the solder can travel to the back of the joint, to fix this, you must unsolder it and restart the whole process to be able to say the job was done properly. So, let me show you how it's done. The first thing you need to do is to empty out the water in the pipe. You could do this by shutting off the main water valve and using the purge on it if there is one, undoing the water meter nuts and draining from there, or by opening a faucet located at a lower level and letting all of the water come out. Once you think that most of the water has been drained out, start heating the joint. Something I do suggest doing at this point is to wrap the nearby joint with a wet rag to keep it from melting as well. You wouldn't want to affect the others while working on this one. My preferred way of doing this is to lock a pair of locking pliers on the pipe and use a small mallet to disconnect the pipe once it's hot enough. This of course is assuming you have the space and flex in the pipes to do this, or else this method won't work for you. Once the pipe is disconnected from the fitting, get a wet rag and wipe off as much solder on the pipe and inside the fitting as you can. If you were to skip this step, the solder would harden and make it impossible to fit back into the pipe without reheating it. So remove it while it's still hot. It'll just make it easier for you. Good! Now it's time to prep everything for assembly. One thing here that's gonna be to your advantage is the fact that the pipe and fitting are now tinned. Meaning that they have a thin layer of solder all around them which will aid in getting full coverage. So no need for tinning flux here. What I like to do at this stage is to dry fit it to see if it goes in. If it doesn't, you'll need to sand it a bit for it to fit. As you could see, mine doesn't fit at all, so I'll have to sand it down a bit. It's preferable to use 150 or 160 grit sandpaper instead of an abrasive pad as it's just not rough enough to remove any material. Alright, now that it's prepped, let's assemble everything together. For soldering it, I'm using lead-free solder and normal water-soluble flux, and I'll only be applying a thin layer on the pipe and not inside the fitting. I notice that when you apply flux in the fitting, it just gets pushed into the pipe. So there's no need to do that as it'll just eat up the inside and time and cause more problems. The fit is still very tight for it to go back in by hand. So to put it back in, I'll use the same technique I used to get it out. But first, mark the pipe to make sure it goes in all the way, apply a thin layer of flux all around it like this, and get some locking pliers on the pipe to lightly tap it in place until it reaches the mark. Perfect! Just as you did in the beginning, wrap a wet rag around the surrounding joints to protect them from the heat. Now, go ahead and do as you normally would. Heat the joint and probe it every now and then to see if it's hot enough or not. As soon as you see the solder melt, you could move your torch away and let the heat from the joint do the work as to not cook off the flux. At this stage, a lot of people will take a wet rag and do this. By doing this, you accelerate the cooldown process, risking a micro crack, and plus, you move the joint as it's hardening, which are two things that may cause a leak. So put all the chances on your side and let the joint cool down on its own for around one minute or so, and wipe off any excess flux. You could actually see the moment where the solder hardens. It goes from a shiny mirror finish to a matte one, which means it's cool enough to wipe down. And there you have it. Go ahead and test it out. If you did it right, I guarantee you it won't leak. With this method, you know that the joint is properly repaired and not just patched up like a lot of people do to save time and money. 
Like I said in the video, I've linked a couple of helpful videos in the description box below that are relevant to this one. And I also linked all the tools and materials I used at the same place. You could also visit my website at www.gottolearnshop.com to see everything in one spot. And if you learned something from this video, give it a thumbs up, share with your friends and subscribe for more. And until the next one, thanks for watching.